Chương trình này được bảo trợ bởi Family Joy tổ ấm y tế của mọi gia đình 714 898 0765. Hi, welcome back to the OC Health and Education Show on Little Saigon TV. I'm your host, Julia Yip. On our show, we have um, Major William Mimiaga to talk about, you know, Veterans Day and his contributions in our community. Uh, cảm ơn quý vị khán giả của Little Saigon TV trong chương trình kiến thức, y khoa, gia đình và xã hội. Hôm nay, Julia có Major William Mimiaga on the show. Uh, Bill, you know, uh, before the commercial, you were able to share this wonderful story of one of the students that you had in middle school, you know, who was struggling, as you mentioned, with behavioral challenges but that you were able to guide him and help him have a career in a, and a steady um, work of sorts. And so that's such an amazing thing to see that you're able to have this um, hope and this guidance for students. You know, for ma many times uh, people had kind of given up on. And I, I appreciate you for um, your kindness and your compassion and, you know, for your care for all the students and I think each individual you touch in the community. Thank you. They have, um, but it's not just me. We're self-contained. You have these students, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade for three years. Yes. And, uh, and they come on the little short bus. Everybody knows, hey, the little bus, that's how they deliver them. But other teachers, I've been able to, and I, that's what I promised them when we do the uh, intake for them, because they're sent from a juvenile facility or from another school for whatever discipline problems, I tell them, hey, we're going to get you back into the mainstream. So I have to find teachers that are willing to take a behavioral student into their class. And it's not easy, one, finding the teachers, uh -huh. but there are a lot of them that have uh, have that same compassion and understanding for uh, for students. They're not just there to teach and draw a paycheck. They really take an interest in kids. Once you find those teachers, then you have to get match up a student, whether it's math, science, history, English, literature, whatever, that they have to be paired with them, where that student does have the ability not only to catch up, but to stay up, because most of them are behind so much in their studies. And so it's a combination of that faculty members helping you out. And then this student does well on the state exams and, you know, praise for him. But, and then, hey, Mr. Bill, you did just a great job. It wasn't Mr. Bill. It was all the teachers that took my student and worked with them. You know, well, Bill, you know, I know you're so humble. But I think, you know, in order to have a great team, you have to have a great leader. So I just want to say thank you for your leadership. And again, you know, when you have a student like that, that that other that society might not, um, you know, have faith in anymore, you still don't continue to have that faith. Yeah, it's, it's a must. But I also had instructional aides, usually three or four at any uh, any day. But those instructional aides, two of them stayed with me for almost 19 years, just at Stevens Middle School. Uh, they stayed with me, and they were a blessing. I had a banner on the wall. Uh -huh. I had banners everywhere. My classroom was not a classroom. It was a learning center. I had more stuff, junk, whatever you want to call it, on walls, stuck here, stuck there, to, to perk their interest. But I had a big banner. I had a lot of banners. But I had a big banner that said, uh, I'd give them an assignment from the newspaper. This is current. I don't want to hear about sports or crime. I don't want to hear about... Uh, what's going on. I want you to find a story that, that touches you. That's the story I want to hear. No sports, no crime. And uh, so they would write a story that it would touch their part of their life, what they went through. I'd get a better understanding of what they went through. But I would tell them, the words you're using, they're unacceptable, or you're not using words correctly, so this dictionary is, is what you need to use. If you don't understand the word that you put down, it's lost its meaning, the whole content of the, your paper. Well, I had a banner that said, uh, the dictionary is to your academic success as the Bible is to your salvation. Mm. Whoa, you can't have that in a public school. <laughs> I kept it up uh, uh -huh. for the 19 years there and the year over. At the, that banner stayed. 
Yeah. But, well, uh, Bill, you know, I think um, when you are um, a teacher in, in the public schools, I think there's many things that you have to teach the students. But I think, you know, as, as we are here today, um, it's a great opportunity for us to see and hear one veteran's contribution to education, yeah. one veteran's contribution to the future of America. But most importantly, I want to know, do you in the classroom celebrate Veterans Day with your students? Oh, absolutely. Even uh, celebrating Veterans Day is a challenge, specifically because when we went to the all-volunteer force, those were kids that were motivated, wanted to be in the service, wanted to wear a uniform, Army, Air Force, Marine Corps, Navy. It doesn't matter. They were excited to join. What we divided and what hurt this country is when we went to the all-volunteer force because we did away with the draft. Mm. So these kids, most don't, 1% uh, of people serve in uniform now. They don't have a cousin or a brother or an uncle or a dad or a grandparents that ever served. So they have no connection to the military. And it's just not the military, but when one uh, uh, joined uh, for two years, was drafted, they had the opportunity to go into the Conservation Corps, the Peace Corps, all these other organizations that they didn't feel that they should wanted to carry a gun. And, and that's understandable. But we lost that, this, this pride of service, this patriotism, this sense of belonging to, to, uh, to part of the, our own history. And so it's difficult to remind them because most of them don't know a serviceman. They don't have a family member that was in this service. So, so you mentioned that only 1%? 1% people that actually serve in uniform today. When as a family member. As or a family member. There. When it used to be, you know, 47%, 52%, you know, half the people, uh, they at least knew someone that, was, uh, that wore the uniform in this nation. So, so how do you teach go, these students? We go in and I go back in history and through time. You know, I tell them, you want to learn, because I have to teach all the histories. I said, you want to learn medieval history. You want to learn Western civilization. Go to junior college. I said, because we're going to go through American studies. You're going to learn the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. You're going to learn why you belong here. And so I go into that, um, how this nation was built, you know, starting with the American Revolution, how people were, you know, the Banana Wars, the Philippines, uh, I go into World War I, uh, the Civil War, uh, World War II. So I cover all these things, what they know of the service above self of others, so that they could be sitting in this classroom with the freedom that they enjoy. And so I tell them, look, I, I do volunteer work at the VA. Usually it's me getting work done, but I said, make a card for a veteran that's at the VA. They've been inside some of these wards for years because of bone injuries and stuff, spinal injuries, paralysis. They've been there. That's their home. Yeah. I mean, I'm able to go visit. We have a barbecue, great time, and we're thanked by the veterans and the staff for holding this barbecue for them. But I get to walk out of there. Yeah. They stay there day after day, year after year. Make a card for them. So they all generate a card, some two or three, you know, with, they like drawing pictures, you know, and stuff. And, yeah. and then we take it to the VA, drop it off to the veterans there. It so for Veterans Day, it's not just about that day. But for you, it's about them understanding um, <clears throat> the pride of service, but also to understand their histories and, and, and so much more. I think what, what you're sharing with, with us today is also understanding how it became, how we moved from being a draft to a volunteer system, how it affected you know, the, the community. I, one of the things that you mentioned is that, you know, when you teach these kids about history, you also bring them back to the present day to see our veterans that are probably in the hospital, so for them to understand that, you know, people like, like our veterans who don't have visitors who would appreciate a card. So I thank you for giving us so much, so many ideas on ways to celebrate Veterans Day, starting with education, learning about history, and also recognizing our veterans who are maybe alone during this holiday. Yeah, so absolutely. thank you for, for, for teaching our students to, first of all, have that patriotism, 
but also to respect and to recognize each of our, our, our servicemen and women. Uh, cảm ơn quý vị khán giả của Little Saigon TV uh, trong chương trình kinh thức y khoa gia đình và xã hội. Julie có thời gian nói chuyện với um, Marine Major William Mimiaga. Lúc mà Julie đặt một câu hỏi về What is Veterans Day? How do you celebrate Veterans Day? Uh, Bill có rất nhiều ý kiến, mà một cái ý kiến mà quan trọng nhất á, là trước nhất mình sẽ phải phải dạy mọi, mỗi em mỗi, mỗi người trong cộng đồng Việt Nam về cái lịch sử của um, cái 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 war cái cái đánh giặc về thêm nữa mỗi cái người mà veteran um, giúp cho mình được có nhiều cái tự do uh, giống như hôm nay uh, nhiều veteran có có thể không có nhiều gia đình thì vừa dùng một cái một cái uh, project vừa dùng làm á, là làm uh, mỗi học sinh làm một cái card để cho gửi cho mỗi cái người veteran uh, trong Veterans Day. Uh, sau phần quảng cáo chúng tôi sẽ tiếp tục nói chuyện với uh, Major William Mimiaga. Cảm ơn quý vị khán giả của Little Sun TV.